Hello, my name's David Riley and I'll be guiding you through the process of setting up an online survey through SurveyMonkey. Uh, this is primarily for my students uh, in 3006 PSY uh, on the Gold Coast, but it may also be useful for the Macrovat students. So the advantages of using SurveyMonkey is that you've got more control of the formatting and uh, when you want to export the data it's a much more streamlined process you can export it straight as a, um, a .csv comma separated variable or as an excel uh, spreadsheet file and once you've done that you can then just copy and paste the data straight into SPSS so I'm going to guide you through the process of setting up an account so you can see it's actually got my information because I created an account earlier. Uh, but it's nice and straightforward to create an account. Or you have the option of signing in either using either your Facebook or your Google login. Okay. So I'm actually going to select already have an account now. And uh, it's remember my password, so I'll just click log in. Alright, now when you st first start out, I invite you to create, complete a profile. Just click, I'll ignore that or I'll do it later. Um, what you want to concentrate here is creating your first survey. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, now, the survey that we'll be working from is a perfectionism scale. Uh, just like I demonstrated with the Google Forms demo. Uh, rather than call it a perfectionism scale, I'm just going to call it the Riley personality scale. That way I'm not tipping uh, the users off to what uh, the questions are measuring. Okay, you can select here survey category. I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, my questions are already written, so I'll click on create survey. Okay, so for people who don't know how to create a survey, it offers some blank questions to get you started. I'm just going to hit escape because what I want to go to is the, um, over here on the left, it's called the builder. And what the builder does is it allows you to, um, put uh, multiple choice type questions so for um, demographic variables like gender that would work well uh, check boxes if it's true false uh, but we're going to be using the matrix rating scale and that allows us to use a like it scale and that's what we'll be using for most of our uh, questionnaire but before we do we just need to add some information now if we go to the survey here, we've got our information sheet. I'm just going to fill this in. Obviously for the Mount Gravatt students it'll have uh, Kathy Medecki's uh, details. Uh, so I'm just going to put Jane Doe. Jane Doe at the enter.net. Okay, so you've got it Put some information here. I'm going to say that it's taking about uh, five to ten minutes based on the length of the scale and I'm going to be a little bit vague here about uh, what the scale measures so I'm going to use non-psychological language so rather than perfectionism about your preferences for high standards and the validity check scale that we're using is a need for order and general and general tidiness slash neatness. Okay. So everything else here is fine. And we've got our actual scale. So we go to the top here. Now we're going to need to include this logo. 
Now you'll see here, because I've entered from Griffith, it's actually included a logo. I'm going to get rid of that. It's not the official logo anymore. Okay, now our first question here, you've got a whole lot of options. Now, before we get to the actual questions, I want to insert a, a information. Alright, so we go to the builder. The first thing we want to do is reproduce our information page. So what I want to do is I want to add an image. Click here. Uh, and I'll just put Griffith logo. And I want to upload a file. Now if you have a look at your information sheet, we've got a picture there. And we need to convert that into an image. So what you want to do is right click on it and click on copy and I'm just going to go to my old friend Paint which is available on any Windows desktop. I hit paste here and I want to go to this option here that says crop. Okay so let's keep the image nice and small. Now for some reason it's got it flipped upside down so I'm just going to go to rotate 180. Now I want to save a copy of that image as And I'm going to call it GriffithLogo.png. Alright, so now that I've saved the image, I can go back in here. The monkey, I just click on Upload File. And you've got to drag and drop the file in there. So I'm going to click on Griffith Logo. Oh, wrong window. This window here. And drop it straight in. Okay, and then click on save. Now in the builder, uh, it doesn't show all the final formatting. What I want to do now is go into options though. Okay, so one thing I do need to turn off in uh, Survey Monkey here is the one question at a time won't allow you to edit the options otherwise okay so now I can go into options and I can click on this box that says adjust question layout and I want to put uh, maybe 150 pixels in and that way it'll sort of centre my logo on most browser windows and then click on save. And you can't see it here but if you go to preview you'll see there that it's displaying it. Okay. Alright, so let's go back to design. Now I don't want it to actually say the word Griffith logo above it, so I might get that, take that away, and I'll put Griffith logo here as the nickname. Now the next thing we want to do is reproduce a information sheet. So that'll involve text. So we go back to the builder. We scroll down here till we find text and we click on the add button. Okay, so then we go to our information sheet which we've filled out now with uh, information about uh, uh, name and the contact information, uh, the type of questions that will be asked. So I can just select all this text here, copy it in and paste it straight in. 
Now, just like Google Forms, you lose your formatting information. But the advantage of having a SurveyMonkey one is that you can actually put that information back. So I can go here, for example, and make that bold. And if I click on this option here, this ellipsis, it takes us to the advanced editor. And what I can do now is change the font size. So I'm going to make that uh, 18 point. I'm going to leave that is. And what other information do we have? So we want to boldface information for volunteer participants. So that's important. Click on bold. email here so I've got my contact information uh, now that tab is probably a bit too severe so I'll bring that in a bit uh, if you agree to participate so I just add a few spaces there now one of the things we wanted to highlight is not Everything else is looking good. Till we get to the participation is completely voluntary. Bold face that. Well, here we go. You may withdraw participation at any time. Okay, and then we'll boldface this last statement. This just covers us so that they uh, so we have informed consent for the class exercise. Okay. And then we click on OK. Now if we go to preview We can see here. Oh, it seems to have left our text off. Something's gone wrong. Let's go back to design. Okay, it seems to have deleted it. Uh, one of the things you'll know, you'll learn pretty quickly about SurveyMonkey is that if you do add something, you need to click on the save button here. So I'm going to paste it again and go into my advanced formatting. So that'll be larger text. I'd like to say that I was demonstrating it intentionally uh, just to highlight to you the importance of clicking save, uh, but that really wasn't the case. So just Trim this back. Uh, no, so bold face not. Or bold face completely voluntary. You may withdraw at any time. This one is boldface. Okay. So now I click on OK, and this time we remember to click on Save. Okay. So if we now click on Preview, we can see what our survey would look like to the participant. I might remove that text there. You can see here it looks nice, neatly formatted. And the more uh, professionally formatted it looks like, the more likely participants are to complete it. Okay, so let's go back to design survey. Now I might just trim that text here.
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add a new page. So, go down here. Remember, if you get lost, always go back to the text uh, builder and click on new page and then add. Okay, so that takes us onto the first page of our survey. If we have a look at our survey, okay, so we've got some instructions here. Everything's on a five point like at scale. Alright. So, what I want to do now is I want to scroll up here till we find a um, bear with me a matrix rating scale so this allows us to have multiple items and have them scored as a like at scale so you click on add doesn't like me today try again add there we go alright so for question one that's where we're actually going to enter the instructions to our participants I'm going to select these um, pop them in okay now if I wanted to make just a single item I could click here but we're not going to do that so each question then will have a different row. So I'll go to the first one here. I'm not bothered by messy people. Copy that, paste it in. I dislike important what imperfect work. I demand perfection in others. Uh, I'm just going to do a few here. And I demand quality. Then we have I expect dedicated work from others. I'm just going to do the first 10. Obviously your scale will be longer. The ideal length would be, you know, 18 to 20 items, maybe 20 to 25 if uh, you have uh, more than three content areas. Now you see this one, it's a, uh, if I just select the first row, it would actually be missing part of the question. So make sure if you have long questions that you do include all the content. Okay, now I'm going to go down to my columns. So we've got strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly disagree. Oh, sorry, strongly agree. Uh, you may have different options. You may decide you want to go with four. You may decide you want to go with six. Entirely up to you. So I'm going to go strongly disagree, disagree. Uh, we've got a midpoint here, we're calling it neutral. Oh, close that. Agree, strongly. Now see here we've got a weighting, so this will be the value that it will give to each response. So in a Likert scale, we assign a numerical value to every response, usually incrementing by one. So for five point Likert, you'll have weightings one to five. Okay. Now, I don't want to add a not applicable because I do want them to actually answer all my items. And I'm going to click save now. So let's have a look at what that will look like by clicking on preview.
Okay. So you can see here it's nicely formatted. It's a little radio box that they click on. And then they can go for strongly agree for a few of them. And then they click on done. Okay, so let's go back to our survey design. So we've got our information sheet here. We've got our second page. Oh, I'm actually going to delete this page. Um, delete page. There was a blank one in the middle. This is our uh, personality scale. Obviously, you'll have a little bit longer than this. And now I want to add a new page to include our validity check. Okay. Now we want to add a new question, which again will be a matrix rating scale for a like it. Okay, so let's go to our second page of our questionnaire. So this was about a need for order and tidiness, which uh, is generally regarded as an OCD trait, and um, there's a moderately strong correlation between uh, perfectionism and these sorts of tendencies. Again, for this one here, it's a five point like it scale, but it's quite okay for your validity check scale. Uh, if you're using a, an existing scale, like maybe the Rosenberg self esteem scale, which uses four points, uh, some of the other scales that you'll see they may use seven. It's entirely legitimate to have a different number of options. They don't have to be the same. So when you're doing a validity check, you want to use the exact wording of that scale. When you uh, in SPSS, you want to look at the correlation between the two, it will handle the conversion for you. You don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to enter all 10 of these items. So the first one is I like order, then I like to tidy up. And I'm just going to copy and paste these instructions. Okay. Now the questions are I like order, I like to tidy up, I want everything to be just right. I love order and regularity. So you can see here there's quite a lot of overlap in the wording. This was a need for tidiness scale or need for order scale from the IPIP. So its psychometric properties may not be great, but it should be sufficient for our purposes. Had this been your uh, actual personality scale, you'd often eliminate some of these items that are redundant in item analysis. And number nine, I'm not bothered by messy people. The final one, I'm not bothered by disorder. Okay. So we've finished our uh, rows, we've got to enter our columns now, which were the same as before. Strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Okay, so I'm going to click on save. If we don't click on save, we'll, you, we'll lose uh, the properties of it. So that's our validity check scale. Now we want to insert a new page and then we'll ask our demographics. So new page, add. 
and we want to go to our uh, demographics page and let's see what questions we're asking. So we're asking for the standard ones, gender, age. Now they've actually done it as an age group. You may find it easier just to enter, have them enter a numerical value, um, such as 27, 34, or you may ask them their year of birth. Generally we don't ask date of birth because that's identifying information. And for this one here they've asked what is your birth order. Uh, they've done that for a criterion validity check because there's some, in, some literature that suggests perfectionism is associated with uh, the birth order. You know, are you a firstborn or are you the youngest child? Okay, so let's start with gender. I'll go up to the top and we're going to have a multiple choice here. Alright, please select your gender and the answers we've got here is male, we've got female, now, in um, statistics, we often uh, code these as 0 and 1. We call that dummy coding. Um, you may like, if you think it's uh, appropriate, to have a third column here, other, to allow participants to select that. Um, not everyone fits into that nice, neat, binary gender category. So I'm going to click on save. Oop. To me windows opening. Alright, so we've got gender. And the next one we've got is age. So I'm going to include now I've got a few options here. We could have a, a text box. We could have a slider. I'm going to go with a text box. Enter your year of birth. Okay, so I click on save, and so from that you can easily uh, convert uh, into actual age. Uh, the procedure for that would be the transform compute command, and the equation would be 2018, or perhaps 2019, minus uh, their date of birth. Uh, the reason why you might go for 2019 because we're more than halfway through the year. Alright. Um, or the other option, of course, would be please enter your age in years. You could do it that way as well. Alright, now the next question we want to ask is what is your birth order? So that's going to be a multiple choice again. What is your birth order? First born or only child? Middle? Youngest born in family? Okay. And click on save. Alright, and then you could add any other demographic questions that you think might be appropriate. Uh, so I think that's about it for our survey. Now that we've done it and uh, we've added our demographics, what we want to do now is go to collect responses.
Okay. So I'm just going to skip that. Now you've got a few options. It, what it does is it calls it a collector. And a collector is a group of um, survey responses. And uh, in the free version, I think you're limited to 100, but with one of the paid um, subscriptions, uh, you can certainly go above that. So we don't want to go by responses because um, we don't have formal ethical approval. We're doing this as a class assignment. Um, so you can send by email if you have an email list. You can post it to your social media or you can get a web link. And then that will allow you to send out a, an email from yourself, uh, from your own email account or post it on your social media directly uh, without sort of linking them to uh, SurveyMonkey. Now I'm going to click on Get Web Link. Okay, so this will be the URL. I will copy that and I'm just going to open a notepad window paste that in so I can access it later alright, uh, multiple responses um, generally you only want one response per participant but if, for example, you've set it up online and you're bringing a tablet device or a laptop or your phone uh, to a friend's house and you've got a few people that you want to fill it out, you might want to go in here and tick on on. The only way it'll know is if it's a multiple response is if it's coming from the same IP address or the device. Okay. All right, um, now we go here, got the option here, anonymous response, anonymous responses, that will not include the IP address. So I would strongly advise you that you turn it on because you really don't want to know which participant uh, completed the data. Let's see, interesting results. You don't want to turn that one on because you don't actually want to show participants how other people have been responding. Okay. So, okay. So I've copied that. And now I'm going to open a new browser window. Okay. All right, so we can see our survey. Uh, it seems to be formatted okay. We've got a bowl there. We've got an option to click next. Oh, so many windows keep popping up. Thank you, Google Edge. Okay, so here's our questions. So I'm just going to enter some answers here. I'm not really paying attention. So I'm the classic example of a, a participant that's just filling it out while multitasking. What I do want to do is make sure we've got a bit of range here so we've got responses in each column. I'm going to go for male, I'm going to lie, 21, and I'm a firstborn. Okay, now I'm going to fill out a few more just so we've got a few participants to have a look at.
Okay. Fill out one more. Okay, just so I've got a different response. Uh, 37 and middle. Okay. So now if we go into uh, analyze results. You'll see here that we have three respondents. Okay, so you've got a few options here. The first is you could, if you wanted to, have a look at each uh, participant, individual participant data, by clicking on individual responses. Now, if you're going to try to use SurveyMonkey for free, that would be how you need to get your data out. So I'm going to jump to the first respondent. And I would need to type these answers into SPSS. So you can actually use SurveyMonkey and not pay for the export feature. But you could get the equivalent functionality from Google Forms. And at least you've got the opportunity to export your data without retyping it. Um, it is possible to get away with doing this. I did it once when I was a poor honours student. Um, and then eventually I realised it was just much quicker just to pay for one month's subscription and export it. Alright. Um, and then you'd move on to the next one and enter the data and so on. But the beauty of SurveyMonkey is that you can actually export your data. So if I go to export file, it would tell me, so you want all respon individual responses rather than all summaries. Okay, it would tell you that you need to, unfortunately, upgrade, which I'm not going to do with a, my trial account. If you do decide that you, you want to upgrade, though, uh, we'll just guide you through the process. I'll close that. Okay. So you don't want to do any of the annual subscriptions. They're hideously expensive. You, you could get away with one or two weeks of data collection. So you'd really want to be going for the um, monthly plan instead. So understand, you click on here, monthly plan. So it's 33, and then you make sure that you unsubscribe and cancel subscription before the end of the month. So basically, as soon as you've got your data, you're happy with it, bye-bye, survey monkey. So you'd click on select. So unfortunately, I can't guide you through the process, but uh, I will show you what it looks like. So it will allow you to export it in a variety of formats. You would want either comma server variables or Excel that's probably going to be the easiest option okay to export an Excel now uh, I have some information here about Excel exports taken from the help page uh, so it shows you step by step uh, you can copy that URL if you want to uh, read through this but it shows you step by step now you won't want summary data, you'll want all responses data. If you did summary data, it would give you the average response, but you want the individual participant responses. Okay. It takes a couple of minutes for it to export, and then you have the option to download the data. One thing that you will need to do, though, uh, make sure you select the right option here. So you don't want the actual answer text, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, 
agree, strongly agree, you want the numerical value assigned with it. Okay? Um, so by default, 1 is assigned to your first answer choice, 2 to your second answer choice, and so on. Um, if you don't do it to numerical values, then it gets very messy to try to fix it up. Now, I'll ha show you an example of uh, what the format will look like. The first column will be respondent ID, so that'll be uniquely generated. It will do the collector ID. Some people may have multiple collectors. It will have a start date and an end date, which is not going to be very useful. The IP address, if you've recalled it. Uh, if you've done the email invitation collector, it will actually collect the email address. So that's another reason why I think it's important that you send your own email out, because you really don't want to be tracking individual people's uh, responses. Um, okay, uh, and then you'll have the first question and it'll keep going. So I'm going to show you some examples of what this export would look like. Uh, so here's a copy of all responses. I'll open that up in Excel. Okay, so I click on Enable Editing, and you'll see uh, all these columns here, the collector ID, the start date, the IP address, etc. So we don't want any of them, so we just select the first uh, A to I rows, right click on it, and then click on Delete. Okay, uh, you've got your question here, and you've got the individual responses. So what they've done is they have exported it with the actual text response rather than say a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and so on so you like it scale so make sure if you do find these text values that you go back and export it with the uh, actual number uh, now you probably need to trim the first row there and uh, then you have each question in a column. Okay, and then you can just copy and paste them straight into your SPS starter file. You need to make sure that uh, the order of the questions matches the order of your SPSS data file, and then just select the text and copy it. So it's pretty straightforward once you get to this point. Okay, so that's about it for Survey Monkey. Uh, if you've got any questions, as usual, just drop me an email and uh, I can guide you through the process. Um, hopefully, this tutorial has been of use to you. If you do decide that you want to pay for the export feature, the other option, of course, is to use Google Forms, and there are other uh, free um, survey administration tools available as well. So you might want to have a, a little look around. The other option if you just want to go the traditional approach is to of course do paper and pencil. Entirely up to you. We don't want to you know, force people to do them online but it does have the advantage of at least if you post to the Facebook group you might be able to get lots of participants from your 3006 peers. Alright and thank you very much and good luck with administering your survey.